Talk to me about how you got brought into the Purge family. Um, the Purge family. You know, uh, the, my agent sent me this script that uh, Blum uh, and DeMonico sent to them for me, and, and I read it, and uh, I would not seen the first one. But I read it, and I was like, this is a great idea. And then I saw the first one and understood why they were making this film the way they were making Because this is the movie he wanted to make first, but because of budgetary reasons, couldn't do it. And... Uh, you know, I went and sat with them, talked about films that I loved, that I kind of reminded me of what I wanted to do. They were on board, and it was a go from then. Yeah. And it is a vastly different film than the first. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more of a of a thriller. It's a it's a it's a chase movie. Uh, you know, we we used films like The Warriors and uh, you know some of the Death Wish films, Outlaw Josie Wales. There were references that were used in in those '70s movies that we wanted to kind of, you know, we wanted this movie to emulate a bit. And it's got. A Western kind of feel too, yeah. like bang bang shoot 'em up. Absolutely, bang, bang, and that's guy. a great. It's a great observation because the movie that I most referenced when I was shooting this was Outlaw Josie Wales, and you know the way Eastwood's character in that movie gets, you know, his family gets killed in the beginning of the film, and he goes on this journey. And it was a very, it's a very similar trip that we wanted this my guy to take. Yeah. Now I, I read that your director thought of you and wanted you because he thinks of you as a real life tough guy. He does. Who, who, who could make it through the purge? Yeah, that's what he told me. Yeah. How do, your thoughts on like on that? Are I mean, you a real life tough guy? I, you know, I don't. What, what's a tough guy, right? What's I mean, uh, um, I'm a fighter. I've been a fighter my whole life. I, I uh, jujitsu and I box and I wrestle and I do all and I still do it all the time now. And you know, I live my life with a certain ideology. And uh, I'm a little bit of a throwback. I think that's what he means. I'm a little bit of a throwback. I live in New York. I don't live in, in L. A. and in Hollywood. And, and uh, yeah, I guess this is what's starting to happen in my career is people are seeing me as, as uh, you know, this this guy of yesteryear, you know, that it's not around much anymore. Um, so I'll take it as long as, <laughs> you know, Liam Neeson, who's a good buddy of mine, we did The Grey together. I think that's a similar thing that happened to him. I mean, he's a great actor. He's always been known as an actor's actor. Great, great actor. And he's a dude. And uh, I don't think it's an accident that at 55 or 6 he became a movie star right. because of Taken. So it's, I think people are hungry for that, you know? Let's talk about this guy that you play. What is his role, do you think, in kind of the purge overall picture? You know, it's a great question. I don't think he's a purger. He's a guy who uses the purge as a mechanism to satisfy something that he needs to get done. So he's got, he's got, he's got the resources, and now he, you know, he's got 12 hours to do it. I don't think he'll do it again after he's done. I think he just wants to do that thing. So he thinks. Right. Yeah. Do you think in real life you could make it through a purge type of situation? Uh, yeah, I do. I think I could. I could. I could handle myself. Okay. You know, you protect my ass. family and kick some ass. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Made in Hollywood.